for, for, for having me here. Oscar, um, really look of, uh, all of you as colleagues in everything we want to do. I know that can be a very strange thing as a regulator to say that to, to people. One of the strangest things about me coming to, to Oscar um, was I actually came from Education Scotland where I had been in HMI for a very long time. So I'm well used to being one of the scary regulators as all of you are in all sorts of ways too. And um, it was very unnerving for me when I came to Oscar and people were coming up all the time saying, oh, we love Oscar. And I was thinking, really? you know we're the regulator um, but people do very much see us in partnership and that has been a very useful thing for us and um, one of the things that we want to do make sure and really genuinely make sure we're doing is moving into being an enabling regulator and you'll hear me using that kind of language more and more throughout this presentation what I want to do is make sure that we as an organization are, um, are, are, are doing the duality of, of what we're supposed to do across, across a firewall. We want to support, we want to develop, we want to challenge, we want to call things out and we want to hold everyone to account. We want to do all of that at the same time. I've done that for a long time. I have no problem in doing that. Um, and I think we as an organization are very well set up to do that. So what I wanted to do just initially is to talk you through very, very briefly, a couple of minutes on what on earth has been happening in Oscar during this time before we move into um, where, where, where we are and the things that maybe will, will be of wider interest to you. We've gone through the massive change that everyone else has, but we also decided to add to that quite spectacularly in that we decided to have an organisation redesign. We didn't do that um, casually, we didn't do that um, and it was without a huge amount of thought. We did it because we knew that we needed to do it in order to deliver our corporate plan. Our organisation is 15 years old. It was an organisation who's done exceptionally well um, in those 15 years to establish itself, really work very closely with the 25,000 charities and all of those who support them. And, to, and, and we, were, we were in a, in a place where we could, we could have carried on doing what we were doing for a long time. But working with the board and working particularly with Lindsay Montgomery, our chair of the last two years, we agreed that what we needed to do was something very different. We needed to move into an empowering space. And frankly, one of the things we wanted to do is to take Oscar well and above the parapet. We felt that we were well known in the sector, well known to those who support the sector, but the public, we've still had this nubbly issue of the public not knowing well about, about charity regulation. They don't need to know Oscar inside out, but they do need to know that, that charities are regulated in order to give them confidence. And frankly, one of the other key things we wanted to do is make sure that all those shapers and influences across Scottish government, across Scottish parliament, and across a wide range of other policy organisations, including funders um, and so on, they need to understand fully what we know and what we do. I don't want to be in a situation where there's a lot of policy and legislation and guidance coming through where actually we haven't had a high level of sphere of influence before it gets out into the public domain. Frankly, a regulator like us does their job very well if nobody knows what we've managed to do in the background because our work has actually been very well utilised before. And again, I'm hoping I'm speaking to the converted on that. One of the frustrations about doing the sort of work that we do and the support work that you do is that very often you will have a major influence on an organization, but by the time that gets out there, no one will know that it was actually you that did it. Um, I'm okay about that and I want Oscar to be okay about that. So um, we've gone through an organization redesign. It's making us more agile. We've gone through it with, with, with a whole set of principles to make sure that everyone um, has been job matched, but you will find yourself talking to very different people as a rule. Um, so not the, not the familiar people in the familiar roles in many ways, although we still have the same people there and the same messages there to still please keep in touch with us because we want to, to, to work with you. We are only as good as the entire network that we have. So let me just move on to what, we're, what, what we've been doing specifically around COVID. Um, we undertook two COVID surveys um, specifically last year, one in May and one in November. And like many other organisations, we did the we, we did them um, as, as something that was an add on to everything else we had to do. Um, interesting takes on some of the key things around the surveys. Um, the first one in May got around 10 percent hit of the charities in Scotland. Um, so out of the, the 25,000, um, in fact, we got nearer 20 percent, excuse me, for the first one. Um, but we went down to 10 percent for the second in November. 
and we've had a really good look at a lot of the a, a, a lot of the analytics to understand that. We think there's three key reasons for that. One, um, people um, are actually quite unnerved about what they don't know, and even those who did answer a lot of our questions um, are saying they really don't know what's happening this year, and that would be one of the major messages of concern is people saying, "How do I plan for the unknown?" And that's that is a huge issue facing the sector. We know, though, that there are another couple of reasons why people pulled pulled back from answering this year. And um, one is um, fatigue of being asked an awful lot of things by an awful lot of people. And um, we are fairly canny about how many times we go to our full twenty five thousand cohort. Um, it is very rare for us to go to them, um, and, but we did it quite specifically because we really needed to know some of these answers for government and funders in particular, and also so that we can work out how to enable you and us and other Others to support the sector. Um, but the third reason that we think a lot of people didn't reply is because they've gone dormant. And that's particularly a lot of the very small charities. I think a lot of them looked around, worked out that they couldn't do what they wanted to do, and they left things behind. They just thought, yeah, we'll get back to that. That's a big worry um, for, 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 for uh, us and for you. How do you contact people who aren't, um, who aren't even looking at their emails anymore? How do you engage? How do you support people when they're saying, look, I'm not going down this, this virtual route, um, so we'll get back to you when we can meet, when we can meet together? How responsible is that and how canny can we all be around all of that? So we've been putting out a lot of material around virtual meetings and AGMs. Um, we had a huge amount of people getting in touch saying our purposes don't allow that. We were very pragmatic about that and said, don't mind, don't care. Try and find the best way you can to possibly do that and get in touch with us to start changing your purposes. Do it, um, do, do it when you need to do it and let us know that you needed to do that in the nicest possible way. What we've been saying to people is if you need to do something that is unusual, write that down, make sure you're noting that and logging it. It's okay to do the undoable and the, the, the unthinkable as it were, as long as you are thinking through the why and you're logging the why. Um, and that's been a very important message for a very risk averse sector, it has to be said overall. Um, so we are really trying to make sure that people know that they can do the right thing. We're saying to people update their, charity, their charitable purposes, obviously. And one of the big things that we did, I think, was to give that grace period um, for reporting for people who were just overwhelmed. Frankly, we were really impressed by the amount of people who didn't need that grace period. There are an awful lot of people who managed to do that. Um, frankly, including us, um, I was really impressed by my own organisation that we could actually manage to, to, to lay our reporting accounts on time um, at Parliament last, last summer. Um, and frankly, if, 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 in many ways, if we can do it, other people can do it. We can all do this. We just need to think of the different ways and the how. We did still extend the grace period because we know that um, we have an infrastructure, I have staff, there's an, an awful lot of people who could still connect. So we've given that grace period, but we're very, you know, it, it ends next week. Um, so we are expecting um, flurries, we're expecting concerns. I think you're probably dealing with some of all of that too and some of the flurries around. I'll be interested in any feedback on that. Um, and we're hoping that um, people do the right thing and really have been doing the right thing um, and, 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 and do manage to do the reporting they require. Reserves was a, was a big issue coming through. We heard an awful lot in our, um, in, in, in our surveys about reserves and people saying they felt that they were being punished by having reserves. Um, they felt that a lot of funding regimes were actually stopping them being able to be being able to apply for additional funding because they should be using their reserves. They were saying we don't want to, it's rainy day. And again, we've been saying, do you think this is a rainy day? Um, let's have a really good think about this. Has this happened in our lifetimes? Let's have a really good think. We're not suggesting everybody runs out and spends everything, anything but. We're a very sensible regulator. And as you would expect, we're saying to people, please don't go out and do that. Think through logically what you need to do with your reserves here. They're also there for the longevity. You've got to think about the beneficiaries in the long term. So please don't just knee jerk into what you're doing. Um, these are always complicated um, 
um, messages to give. And in many ways, these, these messages can be aggravating for people. They are very, you want your cake and eat it messages, aren't they? You know, you're saying to people on the one hand, do the right thing now, but we're saying on the other hand, don't put your organization into jeopardy. The one thing I, I, in addition I would say about that is people need to look after their beneficiaries and to deliver their purposes ultimately, rather than looking after their organization. Organizations are not there in perpetuity just because those organizations should be. So again, one of the things that we are genuinely saying to people is stop and have a really good stock take about whether or not by doing the right thing by your organization, you're actually stopping yourself doing what you should do to, to benefit your beneficiaries. So it's a big question. The trustees annual report, all of you will have heard various people from Oscar over the years talking about this. It actually needs to reflect what's happened um, at, at, at any time, but particularly this year's need to reflect what's happened throughout COVID. As an example, um, what we've been doing in Oscar is certainly uh, for, for each board meeting, I've had a board specific report going in outlining what we've been delivering on the COVID specific outcomes that we set in our business plan last year. That means that I have an audit trail right through the entire year of exactly what we've been doing about, about all of those different outcomes and, and all of those different areas that we were working on. And I would expect organisations, big and small, to be doing the same. Um, even if they are very small, I want to see that narrative coming through of the so what of this year. We've done a lot of new guidance. Um, gosh, we've been a busy bunch. As I, as, as I say, it's been a very interesting time to ask people to, 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 to move home. We were a very present -y organization and um, almost no one worked from home in Oscar. You walked in and you had 50 people in that, in that building almost all the time. We will be radically changing that, but we've had to move to being to, 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 to being at home as everyone has and finding our way through that, supporting supporting people with an agility, but also developing new guidance. I'm really proud of what we've managed to do on that, and we've been using what we've what we've learned from individuals, what we're hearing from the the, the engagement that people are coming in to, to have with us through the Meet the Charity Regulator um, um, events and so on that we had last year, as well as what we were getting through our surveys. So I would suggest that everybody should still keep an eye on the the COVID guidance, even if you think you know what's there. We're still refreshing quite regularly to make sure that it's as relevant as it possibly can. And please be encouraging those charities um, and trustees that you're working with to do that too. It's not only us, um, and it's important that we've been working particularly with SCVO and also with the COSWL, who are the body, obviously, as, you, as most of you know, who work with the leaders of a lot of the major um, charities. Um, we've been working with all of them to make sure that we are working on a complementary basis. We've been looking specifically at what some independent examiners might need to, to know and understand and making sure that there's a relevance to, 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 to that group in our guidance. Um, and there is extra SORP guidance available and there's been a huge amount of work done on SORP guidance. One of the last meetings I went to before lockdown was one of the, was the first meeting of, um, of, of the, one of the new SORP groups and we were talking a lot about the engagement partners and so on there. I'm assuming actually a number of you might actually be involved in, in, in a lot of that and, and hopefully you will see what's coming through from SORP as actually being really relevant to a lot of the organisations that you support. We've also been working on um, our YouTube channel and um, we as quite a shy organisation are getting a lot better at doing webinars, doing all sorts of things and putting ourselves out there. Um, I now have this, light, this, this, this lovely little halo light to help me with, 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 with various things that are being filmed um, so that I don't look sick, um, which is a quite a, health, a help, helpful thing. This lighting thing is terrible when you're online, isn't it? So we're all trying our best to make sure that we've got lots of webinars there's lots of things out there that people can actually go and refer back to. I'm fine about being filmed today because I think anything that can be used not only once but multiple times is a very good thing. Um, and we have, as we said, um, updated the guidance on, on, on um, reserves in our, in our COVID specific guidance. Other news. We've been doing a lot of work with Foundation Scotland on sleepy trusts and those of you who keep an eye, eye on the, the news coming out around the, the charity world will see that. 
it's 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 work that just makes sense isn't it there's there's money sitting out there that actually people gave so that it could be it could be used for good effect in charities and for specific cohorts of beneficiaries working with foundation scotland will enable us to unlock a great deal of that and um, and it, actually we 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 reckon that there are around about around 400 um charities if we look at the comparators to what um what what um work the work that was done under in um in england and wales with the charity commission um, they, if we look at that as a comparative figure, around 400 trusts in um, Scotland should be sitting with money that can be unlocked, and we're 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 looking for support to do that. So, um, again, anything that that you're aware of or you think about, please do be in touch with us as 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 we take that work forward. And um, we we did the short term work on reviewing um, reserves guidance specifically in the COVID guidance, but now we're actually undertaking the review of uh, the reserves guidance overall. It's useful sometimes when you look back at guidance and you think, oh yeah, it's time that we looked at that properly. Again, it's timely for us to really stop and help people um, to really think through the nuances of what they should be doing. It's also to try and um, debunk some myths. So many people were getting in touch with us last year to say, well, actually um, Oscar say we've got to have three months worth of reserves and you're really inhibiting us and we were saying tell us where we say that we don't say that but people make assumptions and then these myths grow so we want to do a refresh there and your support would be really useful on that um, and there are lots of um, development processes going on for SORP and those of you who are interested and, and engaged in that area please do go on and look at um, everything that's going on in SORP and try and feed in to where you think we should be going we're also going to, to, to do a lot of work around helping charities improve their trustees annual report. As part of the organisation redesign, um, we, we, we've actually got a new specific post and we have, a, we, knew, we have a new colleague joining us in a few weeks time who's really going to help to take forward the, the annual report and annual return work. I want to tell you a little bit more about that and that I think what's really exciting for me about that is that what we're trying to do is move away from people just thinking I send information in, don't care what they do with that. I worked at YouthLink Scotland for a long time before I came into government and um, I, I was the deputy CEO there and every now and again a chief, a chief executive would get in touch with me and say, I've got to do my return to whether it's government, whether it's a funder, and um, it wouldn't have been Oscar at that time because Oscar didn't exist at that time, which shows you it's a fair, fair bit of time ago. And they would say, you know, frankly, I'm just going to send last year's because nobody reads these things and nobody cares. Um, so I don't care. It's not acceptable to do that because these reports are the account to the public, they're the account to the beneficiaries, they are the account to funders. But Ultimately, they should actually be used by organisations to help them with their own self-awareness and their own self-evaluation of what they're actually doing. How good are you? What does it tell you when you're doing your annual report? What does it tell you you're not doing? What are you secretly disappointed in yourself about that you didn't manage to do last year? And how can you actually really make sure that you're announcing that publicly and holding yourself to account publicly? So one of the things we're very much looking at is how to how to change the questions and change what we are asking so that it enables people to increase their self-awareness and their self-reflection. I'll come back to the, a little bit of that towards the end as well, just in terms of who's out there to help. Um, and I'm aware of time and what I was thinking is I want to finish this just after 10. Is that about right, Andrew, so that we've got some space for, for questions? Because I've got some questions to pose too that I'm hoping people might answer. So in terms of our charity accounts work, um, we are moving much more towards sample based work. We've done sample based work for quite a number of years. Um, I, again, I was a bit surprised when I arrived and people were thinking that I had a small team of people beavering away looking at each of the 25,000 um, sets of accounts that were coming in, trying to sneakily find anomalies in there and then go out and tell people how clever we were because we found them all. We don't do that. We do it sensibly, we do it thematically, we do it on certain searches and we change the themes every time um, so that we can actually make sure that we are getting decent samples through. We're following the trail of where we, where we need to go with, with, with our own risk framework. Um, but we also do some additional thematics. 
we want to really look at a more a holistic consideration of what's present there. And that's why, again, what I'm trying to make sure that we're doing through our organisation re redesign is I don't want to have a segmented group of people looking at accounts. I want to have a group of people who are looking at what are, what are we understanding from all of this work in the round? What is it telling us? So we're having a really good look now at what is actually presented. So we're not solely looking at figures at any point. We're looking at a combination. Um, if we ask people to do that, we should then be doing the same to, 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 to follow it through. So in terms of that, 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 that review, that is an exciting piece of work that we're going to be doing this year. Um, and we are looking out to others, um, organisations like Quality Scotland, like Evaluation Support Scotland, to see how we make sure that we're doing this in a way that's going to keep it very accessible for the organisations that we have out there, that sublime to the ridiculous sort of scale of charities that we have, the almost all very small charities. How do we make sure that we're not scaring them by saying we've got lots of really complex questions here? We don't ask, want to ask complex questions. We just want to ask smart questions that are going to enable them to think about how they improve, how they do better. So that's ultimately what we're trying to move to. Um, the new online system, we, again, it would break your heart if you look at the timing for this. We were ready last March to start moving into radical change for our, for, for, for our digital presence, and we had to put a lot of that on hold. But we've been doing a lot of work with, 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 a, with a new online um, organisation, and, and, and we're developing our new online system. I hope, I hope people are starting to find it more intuitive, and you will see more of that as it comes through. The main thing, again, I would keep saying is feedback to us and tell us if you're hearing from, from charities that they're finding it harder, easier, anything, please encourage them, but also to do please keep in touch with us and let us know. We, we, we are all about improvement. I'm not complacent at all about the fact that our organisation is great and working really well, but I want it to be even better. Um, I, 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 I come from a, a continuous improvement journey background. It's everything I'm about. So um, maybe that's not so good for those who, who work in the organisation thinking, gee whiz, Maureen, do we ever actually manage to just sit back and think we're doing brilliantly? Well, no, we don't because we work in a fast moving world. We work in a world where everybody needs more, wants more and so on. I don't need people to work harder, but I'm saying let's think about things in a very different, very lateral way. And um, we've broken our organization down into much smaller teams because everybody should I should hear a lot of chatter in the organization at all times where people are actually saying I got this what do you think what do you think I don't need people sitting in quiet corners thinking about what they're get, getting from charities anymore I really need people to be engaging and thinking there was a lot of that already but we we, we are up the upping the ante about that a great deal more so it would I thought it'd be cheeky and set some challenges um, why, why, why not? I figured, you know, we're, we're not sitting together in Dumblane, so you can't throw things at me if I set some challenges. We're, we're all quite far apart, but you can ask me awkward questions or, or answer these. But these are very genuine questions about how well do you actually know your clients? I get concerned when, when I used to get concerned in, in Education Scotland when I was um, re responsible for people who were the, the link to a, a local authority or the link to a particular set of schools for a very long time. And I would say to them, that can be a bit scary because you think you know them before you even walk in the door. You need to stop and think, what has changed for them? How, how are you asking them different questions? How do you, do you actually know what they do? Or do you just think you go in, you, 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 you deal with the numbers and not the, and not the whole picture? That's, these are cheeky questions because I'm sure I'm speaking to the converted and the people who are passionate about the, the, the organizations you work for and work with. I'm sure you are passionately asking them the questions, but I suppose I'm, I'm, I am asking you to, to, to try and think about that through a different lens. How do you actually make sure that you're asking them not just the questions they would expect from you, but the questions that, that actually really help to, to generate the issues that they can say to you? You know, we are worried about that. We weren't going to ask you about that. Again, it's, it's a, it's a, we are all in rotten places with the questions that we can ask, because sometimes people see you walking in the door and they think, how quickly can I get you out? How rude. You know, isn't, that, isn't, isn't it strange that people just want you to come in, do the quick work and then run away? We need to turn that around so that people actually are looking and thinking, we are all enablers. So I suppose that my challenges are, are you know, how, how, how enabling are you being in your questions? How thoughtful are you being about the questions that you can ask so that they can say, 
thank goodness I've got bigger things I wanted to talk to you about this year, or maybe we could take 10 minutes at the end. That idea about the whole annual report, so it's not just a specific contribution to that, it's actually thinking, how do you also, how do you use the numbers to tell the story? Again, if I go back to my Education Scotland experiences, when I would go in and, um, and, and, and I would undertake a, a review of a whole local authority and they would say, here, 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 here are the numbers and then we can talk to you. Know, here's the numbers of how many people passed, how many exams and so on. I'd say, that's lovely. We're not looking at that separately. We're looking at all of that together because that tells me the story about your CPD. That tells me the story about everything else around you. That tells me the story about the morale in your organisation. That tells me about the passion that people have. Um, so it is about that complexity. Um, and I just wonder if you can um, if you can feedback and give me some comments and thoughts about um, how difficult it is for you and what else you need to have support for and support with to be able to support those charities to tell the whole story. Now, why aren't you letting me move on? Honestly, I've got one last very, very simple, straightforward slide. There we are. So I said it throughout this presentation. Please, please keep in touch with us. We want to understand what you understand. Um, one of the things we don't hear very much about is what you're finding throughout your process and, through, and, and um, it is something that we should be hearing too. So again, in the nicest possible way, you come across something that is a concern, um, please, do keep in, please do get in touch with us when that happens. It's part of the act, it's part of your responsibilities, it's part of our responsibilities to encourage that. I think, um, you know, very often the, the nicest thing that we, should, we could, should be hearing is, hi, we came across this issue and this is what we've done to, to, to solve it and help to improve that. Those things are like gold dust. And if we hear those, that's a really helpful thing. And we, we're going to start building up case studies and exemplars and all sorts of things this year. We've increased um, our comms and digital presence so that we can make sure that we are getting more and more of those messages out to people. So the more you tell us, the more we can share. So thank you. I hope that's been useful and helpful and happy to engage. <laughs>